Sun Wiz with a, another monthly update um, here today to talk with you about what's happening in the market and there's some very interesting movements that are occurring. Uh, and in addition, we're going to be talking with Hayden Fletcher from Canadian Solar uh, about his perspective on the market and everything that's happening. Before we uh, jump into Hayden, let's have a look at what's going on in the market. So let me share my screen with you. And bring sorry, let's bring this up. So, what's fascinating about what's going on at the moment? We're about to release some figures that show that July was a record month for volume across the country in the sub 100 kilowatt range. Now, what was interesting about this is not just a record nationally, but we saw a record across New South Wales, Queensland. Victoria and South Australia all concurrently. So this wasn't just one state going ballistic, this was everywhere. And if you look at what happened to Victoria, that jump was impressive. In fact, what we saw was looking at Victoria, 30% growth in monthly volume in a single month. Uh, that's substantial. Uh, that was also the case uh, in South Australia and Tasmania, 25%, but every state experienced double digit growth, even the ACT, 41% growth. So that's what drove the market. Um, it's bloody impressive. Now, residential volume was significantly up uh, and that drove average system prices down somewhat. But if you look at another chart, which I was just eyeballing a second ago, and that is the monthly volume of commercial 10 to 100 kilowatt range broken down by system size. You just see that that's just skyrocketed as well, just keeping up with uh, residential. The larger system sizes aren't keeping up with that growth pace. So that's one of the major things that's happening with the market, which uh, I wanted to have a chat with Hayden about. But before we do that, I also just want to show you a little teaser about what's happening um, with market share. And so let's quickly have a look at um, some data which uh, SunWiz gets access to, some metadata um, from uh, our relationship with Open Solar. Uh, it's anonymous, it's aggregated data, so you're not seeing any individual projects or customer details or even um, solar company details. But this is representing, I think, about uh, 80 megawatts worth of proposals. It's one of the it's the largest, um, perhaps I believe the largest software uh, in Australia now. And this is your market share breakdown by inverters. And so you can see that there's definitely a dominant player in there. I'm not giving away too much. You know, for the subscribers of, of Insights, I'll show a little bit more, but um, you can see that there's significant market share dominance, but then there's a, a quite a chunk of companies there that are in that mid range here. And then you'll see some kind of trail off towards the smaller companies. What's interesting, however, is that leading company has significantly decreased in market share in recent times, according to uh, proposals entered into Open Solar. Um, and I'd say they're a fairly representative uh, sample set. Uh, and then some significant growth, particularly from uh, one company, but um, not just that one company as well. Having a look at pricing across the set, whenever I look at pricing, um, we, we sometimes look at the, this is system level pricing and net customer prices. We see this consistently across every data set we look at that Enphase is included in the uh, dearest systems. And when you look at uh, the input costs for Enphase, it's uh, no surprise why um, they are the, the most uh, dearest option out there. And uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't sell them. And some people are doing with excellent volume and good profit margins as we've seen. Uh, now you look at Solar Edge also that the distributed um, technology uh, in, panel level optimization, uh, also being one of the dearer options there. Um, SMA and, uh, and Fronius and um, ABB, all about the same median price there, um, uh, though the range on SMA in the lower quartiles, uh, price are, the system price was a little bit higher. Uh, towards the bottom level of prices, then you've got uh, Huawei, Goodway, um, Solus and, and Crowatt and so far Solar. So some interesting things there as well. I'll leave the data there. I've got a bit more to show, share with you, but I wanted to uh, introduce you to Hayden Fletcher. Um, so give us a wave, Hayden. Great to see you there. I understand <laughs> you're, um, <laughs> you're in lockdown too of a, of a different kind, but um, uh, Hayden and 
uh, I first crossed paths when I first entered the solar industry in, um, uh, was it 2005, way back at Going Solar. So um, um, it's yep. uh, been a while there, mate. Um, I think we've probably yeah. got a few more gray, gray hairs in the beard. <laughs> um, lovely to be having a chat with you. Yes. Tell us about your, your role now for those people who, who don't know the heights you've ascended to. Uh, sure. Uh, for the last few years, uh, well, coming up towards seven years of being with Canadian Solar, the last three to four years been uh, country manager. Um, so uh, most people know us as the module uh, supplier. Uh, so I manage our module business and our uh, turnkey construction business. And uh, uh, the other area of the business that I don't uh, focus on myself is our development and own arms. But uh, um, yeah, uh, as you said, been uh, been around the traps uh, personally since two thousand and one. So um, yeah, starting with uh, going solar. Impressive. And uh, tell me, you saw those volumes? Uh, yeah, they're going gangbusters, um, mm. residential and commercial. What what do you put all this down to? Um, oh, there's, there'd be so many factors, and uh, I I dare say it, it, the the glaring one at the moment would be uh, a lot of people have been home uh, now for uh, at least four months, uh, possibly seeing their electricity bills, possibly uh, the likelihood of uh, being home for the foreseeable future. So uh, I think that um, definitely has a, a part to play. Um, that said, we have also seen in the last year, um, module prices continue to come down um, and I dare say that in the last um, especially the last six months the, the competition is is strong um, there is an oversupply of product of production capability across um, certainly across the um, the major uh, manufacturers who uh, in the next 12 months the top five manufacturers alone probably have enough capacity to uh, supply the uh, global market. So um, there is a lot uh, happening in happening in that space. Um, obviously, we're seeing power classes uh, shoot up as well. Uh, so um, that would also be a, a factor of uh, the costs of uh, uh, system costs are coming down uh, that, that may be paying a bit of a part as well. Uh, thank, thanks for that, Hayden. And you mentioned power classes. Let me just quickly share you my screen again. Can't help but um, show you this one. Uh, this is the uh, distribution of um, panel wattages uh, for a, a range of uh, solar retailers and what they're proposing. And you can see there that back in across 2019, the median level panel size was you know, around that 330. Uh, what mark certainly there were some uh, larger panels which are being proposed but um, come Q2 2020 that's taken a significant uh, increase and uh, also you know, for the uh, first data we're seeing for um, Q3 again significant increase so it really does seem that um, panel classes are shifting upwards um, how does that affect uh, system pricing how does it affect your, your cost of panels um, What's, and what's the future hold for, for panel classes and, and pricing? Yeah, I think you will continue to see the 365, 370 uh, start to dominate through, uh, if not into Q3, certainly into Q4 and uh, early next year. Um, the residential or, or sub 100 space, uh, the 370 is certainly the, um, the, the flavour of the month. Um, we're starting to see a trend towards the 440 watt modules as well, um, particularly for commercial. Uh, so we'll start to see that. Uh, some of you may have seen our um, announcement uh, about a month ago uh, on the 1st of July. Um, we released our 590 watt module, which uh, a lot of uh, customers are looking at in the utility space, uh, looking at the larger formats, um, and of course, when you get into the, the larger projects, it's more around um, the LCOE. Um, it's less of a, a, a critical factor for residential clients. So um, what we're seeing is by having these um, slightly larger cells, slightly larger modules, uh, a lot of customers are either being able to drop uh, a module off the end. Um, so again, it's 
fewer components to uh, consider, uh, but uh, making it that little bit quicker and cheaper to install. But um, I suppose for, for most people, it's seen as a, a more efficient panel um, uh, compared to some of the lower power classes. So uh, I feel there'll be people out there selling it based purely on efficiency. Um, so uh, that, that would be a factor as well. Now, of course, uh, might be showing my age, but I remember um, when you were spruiking 150 watt panels at a desk beside me, um, yeah. things have, have come a, a, a long way and uh, mm. seemingly no end um, to that uh, relentless search for improvements in efficiency, but probably um, as much, uh, you know, how can we bring down the cost of panels? Is, yeah. is that the key driver for, for going larger and larger? Um, yeah, th there's, Several reasons for it. I mean, we've, as you, you, we've seen in the last two to three years, there's been significant increases in um, power class on the back of, the, with the module pricing coming down, uh, there's been a lot of technologies uh, that have come in uh, because of that drop in price. So things that have been around for 10 years or more. So um, the dual cell or half cut cells, um, perk technology, um, multi bus bar, these sort of things have all come in in the last few years and it, it's helped to increase the, uh, the module efficiency without um, a huge increase in cost. 10 years ago, those sort of technologies, they uh, weren't advanced enough and were seen as um, too costly when we're looking at module prices when they're in there, you know, potentially into their dollars. Um, whereas as the uh, prices have come down, uh, considerably those sort of little things can be put in and uh, Canadian Solar one of the first to bring um, the, the the dual cell and the perk uh, particularly to the poly product but uh, to to the sort of um, major part of the market I suppose um, a few years ago um, and that's seen a lot of others uh, come along in that journey as well and it's just uh, but you know the the, the volume has um, allowed for those costs to come down even more and, and uh, hardly, hardly uh, negligible. So, and we're seeing the same uh, with the um, uh, bifacial modules, for example, um, which again is predominantly for, for larger commercial or um, utility projects, but um, uh, just those little things that can be implemented into a new product that makes it more efficient without much cost. So. Um, that's why we are seeing that drive up. Um, there is a bit of, I won't, I'll stop short of calling it a warfare, but there, there is that play amongst uh, the manufacturers of increasing the cell size and we don't know where that will stop, but it, it looks like there is a bit of consolidation happening now um, amongst the, uh, the major cell manufacturers at least. And um, we should start to see a bit of a consolidation happening again on, on where power classes will sit and a bit of a slowdown, I suppose, on on that rap rapid ramp up we've seen in the last uh, 12 months or so. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just saying that I'm not sure if I covered your question. <laughs> it, it did, thanks Hayden. And yeah. but you mentioned cell manufacturers uh, and while on the one hand you said that panel manufacturers, uh, you know, the top five, there seems to be an oversupply of uh, production capacity. Um, uh, somebody wiser than myself mentioned that there was a, a explosion of the uh, um, which may affect uh, cell supply. Do you want to uh, give us a little bit of details about what that means for the um, industry and how it'll affect uh, us in Australia? Um, so yeah, you, you're probably referring to the GCL uh, factory accident. So uh, that's still relatively new and some uh, information just coming to hand of how that's going to impact the market. Uh, the industry in Australia at least would not have felt um, the impact of that. So. Uh, in, you'd likely see Q4, Q1, uh, a slight uptick of anywhere from 10 to 20% um, in pricing uh, on the back of uh, fewer cells being available in the market. So um, most module manufacturers don't produce 100% of their own cells. So there is a separate uh, sub-industry there that a lot of people that uh, are watching this thing won't be exposed to. Uh, but there is certainly a uh, going to be for the next six months a shortage uh, or a reduction um, in cell capacity. 
uh, and we're already seeing uh, on our side uh, a cost uh, increase from uh, from them. Uh, we're also to be mindful that we are heading into the peak season for, for solar, uh, where uh, in Australia, September through to November is generally the three busiest months uh, on the back of uh, trying to get systems in for summer and before Christmas, but also uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, a lot of countries are racing to get systems in um, to beat the snow and, uh, and other factors as well. So um, it's always a, a busy period. Prices tend to go up for these few months anyway. Um, we just may see it tick up a little bit more than usual. Um, and then potentially some normality uh, come you know, March, April. Now, thanks for that, Hayden. One trend that's been interesting to me, I've had a, a number of panel manufacturers um, come to me and express some interest in the uh, inverter market, hence why I showed a, a sneak preview of some inverter um, uh, trends. Uh, I think uh, you're, you're, you've joined the ranks of um, not just manufacturing panels and, and, by the way, you know, being one of the largest um, utility scale solar project developers and installers and uh, O&M providers. Um, what else can you do? <laughs> uh, so, well, I suppose there's two reasons. Um, well, for us, there's two reasons why that uh, inverter information is uh, is useful. One, uh, it gives us clarity as module manufacturers of where, uh, what size systems are actually being installed. Um, and we can tailor our products to suit. So, uh, for example, the in a lot of markets, that 6.6 .6 kilowatt is the, the number to target. And we try and adjust our power class um, classes available um, to, to try and get as close to that as possible as well. Uh, and it's good to keep an eye on, you know, where, uh, where systems are heading, whether the sizes are heading up or down or, or staying um, solid. So, uh, so that's, it's, that inverted information is good for us as panel manufacturers as well. Um, but yeah, importantly, uh, we have announced that um, we will be uh, introducing our own inverter to the market. Uh, our own design and manufactured product as well. So uh, that will be available uh, more than likely into the early new year uh, once the uh, certification processes um, go through. So um, starting small, small volume, um, but uh, it allows us to uh, leverage our knowledge um, with, uh, with modules and, and tailor um, a product to suit our own products as well. So. Um, Australia will be one of the first uh, few countries, um, alone regions, to, to get a hold of that product. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Fantastic. Um, Hayden, look forward to seeing some more of the technical details, hearing about the strategy of, and uh, watching that product uh, come to the market as well. Hey, mate, um, let's leave it there. Yep. Uh, great to chat with you. Um, yeah, hope you're, you're doing well. And. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for sharing your, your insights into what's happening in the market. Um, no worries. They go beyond mine. Been a pleasure. Thanks, Roy. All right. Chat again. See you guys, everybody. Cheers, mate.